Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetus ultrasound. This is the seventh video in this video series about lymphatic malformations. Lymphatic malformations contain dysplastic but mature lymphatic channels. The fetal literature frequently refers to macrocystic lesions as cystic hygromas if in the neck or microcystic lesions as lymphangioma. This nomenclature has largely been replaced since 1982 in that all these lesions are now referred to as lymphatic malformations. Therefore, we must refer to these as nocal lymphatic malformations and non nocal lymphatic malformations. 75% of lymphatic malformations occur in the neck and the majority originate in the posterior triangle or oral cavity, which left side greater than right. The incidence of nocal lymphatic malformation between 10 and 14 weeks of gestation is approximately 0.30. 5%. Less is known about the incidence of non-nocal lymphatic malformation, however, they have been reported to be approximately one-fifth as common as nocal lymphatic malformations. What is the pathogenesis for these malformations? In theory, the lymphatic fluid in a fetus first follows into jugular lymphatic sacs and the jugular sacs then develop connections to the venous system. They ultimately become the terminal portions of right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct. The communication between jugular lymphatic sacs and jugular veins is formed at 14 days conceptional age. A failure in this communication results in dilated jugular lymphatic sacs. Non nocal lymphatic malformation may result from non communication at any portion of lymphatic or lymphovenous system. Lymphatic malformations are well defined multi cystic lesions with numerous internal septa and may be infiltrative and cross facial planes. They are classified into microcystic, macrocystic, and combined lesions. Lymphatic malformations often coexist with venous malformations termed venolymphatic malformations. What is the etiology of these malformations? Nocal lymphatic malformations diagnosed during the first trimester are highly associated with chromosomal abnormalities, about 51% and the most common being trisomy 21. Other anoploidies include Turner syndrome, trisomy 13, and trisomy 18, and also deletions such as deletion in long arm of 13 chromosome and in short arm of 18 chromosome. Additionally, cardiac and skeletal malformations are seen in 34% of cases. The most common cardiac defect is a single ventricle that is hypoplastic left-sided or right-sided heart syndrome. Early diagnosed nocal lymphatic malformations malformations are associated with congenital syndromes and other malformations and should be distinguished from lymphatic malformations developing later in pregnancy that are generally isolated lymphangiomas. Non-nocal lymphatic malformations are usually isolated yet can be associated with syndromes such as gorham stout disease which has other names like vanishing bone disease or idiopathic or progressive massive osteolysis and Klippel-Trenoni syndrome which has a period including cutaneous capillary malformation or port vein stain, lymphatic anomalies and abnormal veins. What must we do for diagnosis of these malformations? Of course, the first and most important modality is fetus ultrasound. Malformations are multi-locular cystic masses with posterior acoustic enhancement and vascular follow limited to the internal septations. Vascular follow is not seen in pure lymphatic malformation 
However, venous follow will be present in a combined venal lymphatic malformation. Macrocystic lymphatic malformations are unechoic centrally when simple, yet may appear complex related to internal hemorrhage or protein. Fluid fluid levels are not uncommon. Microcystic lymphatic malformations appear hyperechoic on account of innumerable interfaces created by multiple small cysts, often too small to resolve. Another imaging modality for diagnosis is MRI. MRI demonstrates a multi cystic transspatial mass. The cystic component is typically isotomalsal on T1 and hyper on T2 images, unless complicated by protein or hemorrhage, in which case there may be fluid-fluid levels. As we can see in this sagittal T2 image, here is a multi-septated lymphatic malformations, which cause pressure effect on airway, and we must pay attention here to patent hypopharynx, glottis, and hypoglottic region. non nocal lymphatic malformation may cause airway compromise. The deep component of the malformation is often not well delineated by ultrasound, particularly if microcystic. Thus, dedicated fetal MRI should be considered to evaluate deep extent and airway involvement to guide prenatal management, in particular the decision for exit procedure. As we can see in this kernel T2 image, a large multi-septated cystic lesion in anterolateral leg with suspicion for airway compromise as the lesion invades the oral cavity and tongue. In this sagittal image, we can see the extension of the lesion to the superior mediastinum. And the image shows poor delineation of hypopharynx and proximal trachea. Also, we can see here the patent fourthly trachea. What is differential diagnosis for lymphatic malformations? The main differential diagnosis for nocal malformation is increased nocal translucency, but the presence of multiple septations and the posterolateral involvement of the neck seen in lymphatic malformation should aid in the diagnosis. Neural tube defect, encephalocele, and cystic trotoma should also be kept in the differential. The diagnosis of encephalocele is typically straightforward as the presence of brain tissue inside the sac is streaking on ultrasound images. Although distinguishing a cranial meningocele from soft tissue edema or a cystic hygroma of the neck may be difficult. The diagnosis of cephalocele is favored when it is possible to demonstrate a bony defect in the cranial wallet or associated cerebral abnormalities such as ventriculomegaly. For non nocal lymphatic malformation, the differential diagnosis includes cystic trotoma, hemangioma, venous malformation, and arteriovenous malformation, and soft tissue sarcoma. What is the prognosis of this malformation? Nearly 50% of fetuses with the ultrasound diagnosis of nocal lymphatic malformation in the first trimester will have a chromosomal abnormality and therefore poor prognosis with up to 25% risk of fetal or prenatal death. Only 17% will result in healthy newborn. However, if the fetus has a nocal lymphatic malformation but has no onoploidy, no cardiac anomalies, and has a normal anatomic sonography evaluation at 16 to 20 weeks gestation, there is a 95% chance of normal pediatric outcome. A spontaneous regression of nocal malformation has been reported in utero, usually between 2 and 7 months of age. This is an example of regression of lymphovenous malformation in flora of mouse. Patient has a suprahyoid lesion involving only the flora of mouth and submental region. This image showing regression over two years without treatment. No functional compromise or mole occlusion present in this patient. 
anterior lymphatic malformations or lymphangiomas rather than posterior do not have the same association with anal ploidy. The outcome for isolated non nocal lymphatic malformation is favorable depending on the extent and treatment response of the lesion. Approximately 3 to 10 percent of infants with lymphatic malformation have respiratory compromise due to airway obstruction or mediastinal extension. What can we do for management of these lymphatic malformations? The finding of a local lymphatic malformation or cystic hygroma warrants a thorough evaluation, including consideration of an invasive diagnostic procedure, for example, chronic venous sampling or amniocentesis for genetic diagnosis, and a detailed anatomic survey and fetal echocardiogram for those with continuing pregnancies. Prenatal aspiration of lymphatic fluid in macrocystic lesions is rarely performed, but considered when there is rapid fluid reaccumulation, infection, or intralesional hemorrhage. Few cases have been described in the literature where aspiration of macrocystic lesions immediately prior to delivery has allowed normal vaginal delivery. This ultrasound image shows prenatal appearance of the axillary lymphangioma prior to intrauterine drainage. And this is the appearance of the left axilla after intrauterine drainage and normal vaginal delivery. Macrocystic lymphatic malformations are often successfully treated postnatal with sclerotropy, but other treatment strategies include radiofrequency ablation or laser therapy. A small focal lymphatic malformation have excellent prognosis both with percutaneous sclerosis and with surgical resection. Large infiltrative lesions can be difficult to treat fully. Recurrence is seen in 17% of complete and 40% of incomplete excisions. Now, please pay attention to this final teaching points. Early diagnosed knuckle lymphatic malformations are associated with congenital syndromes and other malformations and should be distinguished from lymphatic malformations developing later in pregnancy that are generally isolated lymphangioma. If the fetus has a knuckle lymphatic malformation but has no anoploidy, no cardiac anomalies and has a normal anatomic sonographic evaluation at 16 to 20 weeks gestation, there is a 95% chance of normal pediatric outcome. Anterior lymphatic malformations or lymphangiomas rather than posterior do not have the same association with amyloidy. The finding of a knuckle lymphatic malformation warrants a thorough evaluation including consideration of an invasive diagnostic procedure for genetic diagnosis and a detailed anatomic survey and fetal echocardiogram for those with continuing pregnancies. Prenatal aspiration of lymphatic fluid in macrocystic lesions is rarely performed but considered when there is rapid fluid reaccumulation, infection, and intralesional hemorrhage. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. Thank you for your attention.